pop quiz. What's a fitness show on TV really meant to do? Is it meant to inform you about the right routines, guide you to the right way to work out? Or is it meant to prod, motivate, even embarrass you into working out? Welcome ladies and gents to a show that's going to do all of that and more. Welcome to another episode of the Men's Health and Women's Health Show. On the show today, how yoga stretches not just your body but also your mind. A US Marine who lost both legs only to stand up taller. And a restaurant spy that tells you how to pig out at a wedding feast. We've all heard about the man who complained to God that he had no shoes until he met a man who had no legs. Turns out that for some, having no legs can be no problem at all. Here's an inspirational story of a US Marine who lost both his legs, yet used exercise to get back on his toes. January of 2011, uh, halfway through my sixth combat tour. The lead uh, Marine sweeping with a mine detector failed to detect uh, the buried bomb and uh, it detonated underneath my feet when I crossed the specific spot. You know, 10 pounds of homemade explosives and uh, basically I remember the sensation of sort of flying through the air and, and landing on my right shoulder. That was almost four years back. Today, Marine Staff Sergeant Mark Zamborn inspires many with his undying spirit and determination. This is such a trauma to the body that efforts to cultivate good physical health are required to reach and maintain uh, a state of healthy being. What it offers in terms of uh, physical health and mental wellness uh, are unmatched. On prosthetic limbs, Zambon has scaled many mountains. He climbed Mount Kilimanjaro just 18 months after he lost his legs and atop Africa's tallest peak, he did a headstand. Zambon's list of achievements doesn't end here. He's participated in triathlons and has also taken up riding. And he credits it all to yoga. My journey in Iyengar yoga actually started uh, in 2011 after I'd lost my legs in a bomb blast. After I was blown up, it was approximately 40 days, I would say, uh, when my good friend Jack, the Vietnam veteran, introduced me to the practice of Iyengar yoga told me that uh, combat veterans really take to the practice of Iyengar yoga because it touches a very sort of similar space in the, the experience of life. For me personally, it's to uh, cultivate and keep myself in a good state of physical being. Mark Zambon continues to distinguish himself with his drive to excel and he certainly raised the bar of inspiration and determination. Next up is part one of a new series we're introducing on this show. Dr. Murli Durai Swami is a mental fitness expert from Duke University in the US and he's world-renowned for his tricks to make your brain sharper and smarter than ever before. Like any good personal trainer will tell you, it's all between your ears. So Brain Doctor's question for the day, what is the impact of obesity on the brain? It turns out there is a surprisingly complex relationship. Obese people tend to be happier. You know, there's this old mythology from Shakespeare where you're kind of lean, skinny, and mean, and obese people tend to be jolly, happy. That may be the case, so certainly happiness is good for the brain. But it also turns out that you're obese then your metabolic system is out of whack. Your cholesterol levels may be higher, your triglycerides may be higher, and research is showing now that there is an inverse relationship between the degree of obesity and the size of the memory centers in the brain. That means the higher the weight that you have, the smaller the size of your memory centers. Research is also suggesting 
that there is a correlation between obesity and your risk for future brain diseases such as stroke and Alzheimer's disease. So what are the takeaway tips from this new research? One, make sure that your body weight and body mass index are in the healthful range for you. So if you have obesity and you're struggling with it, make sure you turn to the attention of a doctor, a dietitian, and a personal trainer to utilize exercise and dieting methods to reduce your weight to a healthful range. The third tip is eat less because one of the biggest reasons for obesity is the abundance of calories, the abundance of food, and our body, we get so much food, it has shut out all its stop signals. So when you eat less and smaller portions, you resensitize your brain so that it's sending you the stop signal when you're hungry and you don't eat so much. So be mindful and it might save your brain. Has yoga got more gurus or more forms? I don't have an answer to that, but I do know that it's got the most number of fake gurus than any other form of exercise in the world. We don't have to worry about those today because we have one of the top yoga teachers in the world, Seema Sonji, telling us how to do it right. Hi, today we're at Seema Sondi's yoga studio. Seema, who also happens to be one of the top yoga teachers in the world. And today we're going to talk about how yoga increases your energy and makes you feel more refreshed and revitalized. Yoga increases energy by revitalizing the uh, breath. When we are working throughout the day, we are bombarded with stress and the body accumulates all the emotions and all the stress that we are collecting inside the body. And when, we, when the breath doesn't flow, there's blockages. When we practice yoga and through the movement and when the way we synchronize the breath with the movement, we're releasing the toxicity from the body and the body gets recharged, the breath flows freely, we open up all the joints and all the, all the toxicity comes out and we feel more fresh. So do you recommend a daily practice for energy? Yes, there is a practice for energy. We need to open up our, our heart it's because we carry everything on the shoulders and the heart center and also sometimes around the hips. So a hip opening session or a shoulder opening session where we are expanding our ribcage to en enhance our energy level through the breath. That will be an ideal situation. That's true indeed. I've personally experienced it with two or three years of practice where I've seen my energy levels increase, my sleep decreased, I'm more re revitalized and joyous. But now we have to get down to actual work and let's go to the mat. Sit in the hero's pose with your knees on the floor. Join a big toes together and widen the knees as wide as you can for the child's pose. Child's pose means balas, balasana. Extend yourself forward, pushing your palms on the ground, pushing your hips back. Just let go here and just relax here and just focus on your breath. As you inhale, you want to gaze up. Look up, join your knees together and lift yourself up into the downward dog or the Adho Mukha Swana Mukhasana. Excellent posture, it's an inversion and a forward bend. It really increases the energy level in your body. So you want to deep breathe, you want to expand your navel, lift the breath up to the chest. And as you exhale, you want to pull your navel in to squeeze out all the stress. You can hold this pose for five breaths, 10 breaths, or if you have the capacity to hold it for a minute, that would be wonderful. As you inhale, drop your knees down. As you exhale, taking your right leg forward, Drop the knee down, walk the back leg way back, take the calf muscle out, roll it out So because you want to be safe on your knees. And as you inhale, you want to lift up both your palms. Ekapada Raja Kapot Asana. As you inhale, exhale, walk yourself forward with your palms on the floor. Bend your elbows, making a soft pillow with your palms. Rest your forehead on it and breathe. And if you observe this posture, it's opening up the hips and at the same time giving a natural stretch to the spine and releasing any kind of blockages from the spinal column, your spine. Fingertips wide, tuck your chin in as you inhale, lifting up, opening up your heart. And as you exhale, drop your chin down, taking your leg back into the 
downward dog. So repeat the same on the left side. Next pose is Matsyasana. Join your legs together. Slide your hands in. So really walk your palms in towards the thighs. Legs are together. As you inhale, taking the energy up. Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, you want to arch your back, expand your chest and touch your head on the floor. Putting the body weight on your elbows, working through your inner thighs. And just focus on deep breathing. If the head doesn't rest on the floor, you can always take a pillow and place the pillow under the uh, head. And just observe the way she's breathing. You see the expansion of the chest and the belly. The breath is flowing freely. It's energizing the body. The ribcage is expanded. The lungs are taking important oxygen. And the exhalation is deeper. As you inhale, you want to lift up, look towards your toes. And as you exhale, you want to come down to release the posture. Taking your arms out, separate your legs. This is the posture which is very important, the Shavasana. You want to relax here completely, focusing on one thing and that is your breath. Slowly join your legs together, taking both your arms back into lock your hands. Giving yourself a nice stretch, rolling to your right or to your left, making a soft pillow, keeping your eyes closed. Sitting up in a comfortable cross-legged position. Do a full yogic breath. Focus on deep yogic breath. So we'll start from the navel, expanding the breath up to the chest till you reach the top of your shoulders. And let's see and watch the results it has in your mind and in your body. Turn your palms in front of your heart center. And close your practice. Touching your head down, holding yourself down towards and being grateful. Now celebrations in India usually mean eating up and overladen buffet tables are usually a sign of a good wedding. In Delhi where I live though, a free-flowing bar is sometimes a little more fun. A restaurant spy today tells us how to work a wedding buffet and not get fat. Enjoy. It is the wedding season and who can resist all the delicious food at any wedding buffet? I'm at a friend's wedding today and nutritionist Lavni Batra will be here to show us how to indulge in all the food when you're spoiled for choices without worrying about your weight the next day. Did you know that we make 200 food decisions on a daily basis? Easy? Not always. Important? Most definitely. And especially if you have such an elaborate buffet to choose from, it becomes much difficult. So today, I'll show you how to eat healthy at a wedding. Out of all the options I have today, I'm going to pick paneer lababdar instead of dal makhni. It comes with less added salt and fats. For one serving of dal makhni, you'll be having 200 extra calories as compared to paneer. So I'll say go for the paneer and keep the dal makhni aside. From all the breads, it's always a good option to go for tandoori roti. It's made from atta, which increases the fiber intake in the diet. But be careful. Half tandoori roti is equivalent to the homemade one chapati. So if you're going for two half pieces, you're actually eating two chapatis. We eat with our eyes. So make sure you take your food at once, sit and enjoy it, instead of making multiple trips for the buffet. A healthy plate should consist of mostly vegetables and a good combination of protein and carb. So half of your plate could be vegetables, 
and the other one fourth could be your carbs and your protein. Hi, can we have pasta and red sauce with vegetables? Can I have tofu and vegetables in hot garlic sauce uh, with very little rice? Nice. Yeah. But I want more vegetables and very little rice. At every wedding, you'll find live counters. Here, I have pasta in red sauce and stir-fried vegetables in white rice. I would go for stir-fried vegetables with steamed rice. This dish comes with tofu in it, so it has more protein content and makes it a complete meal. Contrary to popular belief, steamed rice can be healthy as opposed to refined flour, maida, pasta. Just make sure when you're getting your stir-fried vegetables, you don't add too much gravy because that can have sugars and too much salt in it. The pasta in red sauce is mostly carbs, so it will rebound hunger faster as compared to this meal. However, if you want to enjoy pasta, load it up with veggies and opt for red sauce. Now it's time to indulge in some desserts. To avoid food coma and sugar rush, make sure you keep a gap of 30 minutes between your main meal and indulgence in dessert. Here I have a choice of fridney which is made with milk and rice and jalebi with rabbi. Out of fridney and jalebi with rabbi, I would go for fridney. The milk is a very good source of whey proteins. Jalebi on the other hand is deep fried and has too much sugar. So avoid jalebi and go for fridney. But again, make sure you're watching your portion and restrict yourself to two tablespoons of fridney. If you just follow these simple tips and do not indulge mindlessly with all the distraction around, you can stay healthy this wedding season. something called um, altitude training uh, at the Pilates and altitude, altitude training center. There's one in Juhu, Vandra, Kulava and um, I have a trainer who trains me every day and basically what I'm doing is I'm training at a higher altitude in a studio. Uh, so my heart is burning fat faster, my body is burning fat faster, my um, blood is being pumping faster. So my skin glows and this and that has really nice uh, side effects as well. I've also recently started ballet classes. Uh, and that itself is a very, very tiring class. I do two, cl uh, two hours uh, per session and it um, uh, does wonders to your body eventually. It's really good for toning. My diet is pretty simple. I just try to keep carbs at a minimum. Um, I do carb circulation, have a lot of veggies, a lot of protein and uh, drink a lot of water. we come to the end of yet another episode until next week enjoy the festive season and don't forget to work out no we won't be happy with your fit not until you're at your fit